Hey everybody. I put the motor back together on this um, Toro Tecumseh three horse um, snowblower and while I got it all back together and all the pieces installed uh, it won't work electrically. You plug it in you push the button it doesn't work. So I'm going to dig in and try to figure out why. At the moment I've just got it tipped up I've taken off the bottom shroud and the front plate and I'm going to pull out this switch. Um, I already started with my uh, with my volt ohm meter with the ohm meter setting and I put it across the AC terminals on the motor side and pushed the button both directions um, positive negative you want to call it that and it looks like it's open somewhere so I don't know if the switch is bad or uh, whatever so we're gonna dig in here just snaps apart. I probably could have been a little more careful with that. There's some latches on the side, but they, uh, they came free real easily. I've had this apart before because the boot was bad and I put a new boot in the switch a couple years ago. off and then all I end up with is load line. It's just the power to the switch. I was kind of hoping I could get to contacts. But not so far. It's a riveted assembly. But it appears that it's just the switch. There's not a rectifier or anything there. Eh. Well. Check this one more time. And then I may have to pull the motor out. So if I go across here and push the button. meters on mega ohm scale. Both directions. Okay, well, guess I'm going to have to pull her down further and get the motor back out. When I did this one before I was um, working with an end wrench, uh, but it is actually a Torx head bolt in there and if you get a universal and a torque socket sometimes like this time I can get on there and get that out and actually an extra long torx bit would be helpful now I have the motor out, that's what it looks like, and it says it's a double insulated electric starter motor, factory installed, 120 volts, 6 amps, 60 hertz. This is a molded plastic um, assembly, I think, because the shaft is offset. I think I'm gonna. I think I can take this apart and take the end off without um, 
without disassembling the drive gear again, but we'll have to see. And I would guess I was right. There's the there's the gear drive that drives the armature. And this is the motor assembly. Let's see if I can see if I can get that out of the I don't want to mess up the gears on this, but I'm gonna to try to grab the See what we got. There's, there's the motor itself, and the cup, and the bearing. Everything. So the motor itself is self-contained. Self-contained meaning that everything's, everything's right here. So why it turns? It has brushes. The brushes are contacting. I don't see I don't see like the the um, brushes or the I don't see anything that looks smoked I'll call it. It all looks pretty good. So and it's a commutated motor Mutated wound, so it's not an induction motor. August 22nd, 1996. So maybe this machine's a little older than I thought. I was, I was guessing it was almost 2000. But now well, let's see if we can figure out what the, where the fault is. Is it the switch, or is there something in the motor that's gone bad? Let's put this on uh, audible. I'm going to just start by going across these windings. And that one looks all right. It's a spring. That should be okay. So let's try. So those are the two connections into the into the windings. I may have to break that down a little further as to whether it's the windings here or whether I have a problem with windings in the in the rotor. Um, I could probably slip the brushes out if I need to. But for the moment, so I'm going to pick up one side of the power in power feed, and I'm going to go to the Okay, I can 
got continuity on the, from the switch. So the switch isn't bad. I've got continuity on both sides. So why won't it run? Alright, well. Let's see here. How about... kind of going through across everything, but let me pick up from where the power comes in to the opposite end of the winding. That one looks alright. Let's try the other side. That winding looks okay. So that's, there's one on each side here. It feeds power in and back out and around, and it feeds into the into the commutator, and <clears throat> hmm. commutator is set. There are multiple windings. So let me see if I can get see if I can get across here. So just for a test, um, I'm going to put the switch back in here so this is safe and snap this back together like so. I have put the motor back in here and tightened up the screws. You just have to be careful lining up the, the, uh, the gear set, but it dropped right in, no problem. So I'm going to hook power up to it and see if it turns. Now this isn't the safest thing to do probably, but... Uh, <coughs> but all I'm going to touch is the double insulated switch, so let's see how it works. We've got 110 volts here, got one of the cords, plug that guy in. Why wouldn't it run? It was <laughs> doggone. Hey, that's great. Now all I gotta do is put it all back together again. Um, tighten up the screws, reinstall it, and um, and see what um, see if it'll turn the engine over. I really do hate it when something doesn't work and I take it all apart and I inspect everything and don't find anything wrong put it back together and suddenly it works and I didn't change anything I mean it's possible that this motor was sitting in a bad spot um, a, a, a bad location on the commutator and it just couldn't get itself moving 
but I don't understand. But we'll, uh, like you say, reassemble it and see uh, see what's going on. All right, the motor's back installed. I don't have all the covers on, but it's it's installed. It's plugged in. The key is off. I don't want it to start, and there isn't any gas in it. So I'm just going to run it short because I I mean there's some residual oil inside the engine from you know it's two stroke, but um, let's see if it kicks. Much better. That's how you take the motor out. That's how you take the motor apart when it doesn't work and put it back together. Now, it's wor it's working, so that's great. Um, my suspicion, and maybe I went too far in taking it apart too fast, um, there are times with a motor, you've got brushes on a commutator, you know, that uh, get to the, to the uh, rotor, and if that, it, those are little segments of copper that have a brush running on them. And sometimes if the brush doesn't make good contact, um, you, you won't get a, a circuit and it won't run. Uh, when I got it back together, I put my meter on the terminals and pushed the switch and it had continuity where it didn't, um, you know, a couple hours ago. Um, so maybe the fix the next time would be before, rather than removing the motor completely, is to pull the shroud and go down there to the uh, gear that, go, that engages the flywheel, and you can turn that gear and spin the motor a little bit and get a different position on the uh, on the commutator. And I say, perhaps I should have done that first, but um, it's working now, so I'm happy. And that's all for now.